Welcome to this tutorial on using the laser cutting machine. Today we'll walk you through the steps to create a precise laser cut gear using Corel Draw and the Epilogue Engraver in TechSpark. Let's get started. First, we need to turn on the laser cutting machine. Locate the power switch and turn it on. Now wait for about a minute to let the machine boot up completely. Next, open the lid of the machine making sure to use both hands. Place your material securely on the bed, ensuring it's flat and properly aligned. It is generally good practice to line up your material flush to the edge of the bed. Notice that there are coordinates on the bed which will be useful later when we want to send our job to the right location. Now let's move over to the computer and open Corel Draw. Find the icon for Corel Draw on the desktop, or if you can't find it, search for it in the bottom menu. Once you've opened it up, create a new project by selecting New Document. Name your document starting with your Andrew ID followed by a description of your file. For example, Andrew ID Gear 1. Ensure the document size matches the size of your material. For our material, we will use 12 by 12 inches. You can also select whether you want the canvas to be in portrait or landscape mode, as well as determine the resolution. You can keep this at 300 dpi. Finally, click OK. This will open up the interface where you will plan out what you want to cut or engrave. There is a menu at the top and at the side of the screen for more options that you will need later. For example, notice in the top menu that there is an option to change the dimensions of your canvas. If we put 18 inches instead of 12, we can see that the canvas gets larger. To reset it quickly, you can use Ctrl Z to undo. To get started, go to File, then Import, and navigate to the DXF of your gear. If you click the drop-down menu of file types, you will see that many are supported, but for our purposes, we will use only DXF. Once you have your file selected, click Import. When the Import menu appears, you don't need to change any settings. Simply click OK and drag your cursor to position your gear where you want it on the canvas. Now you can delete any extra text such as SOLIDWORKS educational use. Also notice that the outer line of the gear is made up of a lot of smaller lines. However, we want to make sure that all of these lines are cut at the same time. If we drag the pinion, we will see that only a small portion will shift and be separated from the rest of the gear. To make sure that they are all cut in one continuous line, we need to combine all the lines except for the center circle. Highlight all of the lines by dragging over the entire gear or using Ctrl A to ensure that you have selected everything. Then deselect the center circle by holding shift and clicking on it. The white dot in the center circle should disappear to indicate that it is no longer selected. Then click the button to combine in the top menu. To check that we have properly combined our lines, we can again drag the pinion and notice that the entire outer frame shifts together while leaving the center circle behind. To help us split the cuts later, we will want to change the color of the center circle. We can do this by selecting the circle and then double clicking the color box in the bottom right corner. At this point you can choose any color that you want, but it's nice to choose a color that stands out so I'm going to choose red. Now we need to select our entire gear and make all the lines hairline thickness for cutting, as this is the only option that will cut rather than engrave. The option for this is in the top menu. Next, add text indicating the number of gear teeth using the A in the side menu. Remember, all text will automatically engrave. Once you've done this, you may get stuck in text mode and will need to switch back to pointer mode in order to adjust the size and spacing of your text. You can drag the corner of your text to resize, but you can also manually change the font size in the top menu. Here I'm choosing 15 point for the font size and making a few adjustments to position the engraving where I want it on the surface of the gear. If we wanted to cut multiple gears, we can copy and paste what we have done using Ctrl C and Ctrl V. But notice that when you do this, it will not be visually reflected as the new gear will be placed on the canvas directly above the old one. It is important to be careful about this because if the machine runs two layers, it may overheat and cause too much of a flame. For now, we only want to cut one gear, so we can go ahead and select our new copy and delete it. Now that we've finished everything up, we can go to File, and then Print, 
which will open up a new menu where we will make sure to select the epilogue engraver as the printer. Once you set the right location, you can go ahead and click print. Another software will open up. Here, notice the coordinates on the bed which match what we saw before. If you haven't already, place the material on the bed where you want it. Since we've already placed the material earlier, it is already correctly positioned and shown on the screen. You might not be able to see your gear on the screen because it is out of range. You can zoom into your part by selecting to fit. Then select the part and ensure its location matches the physical bed by manually changing its coordinates on the left. For where I place my material, changing the Y coordinate to 20 will get me pretty close. You will notice that the gear disappears, so to return to the bed, click the button to table and adjust the position of your gear by dragging it across the solid material to where you want it. Also ensure that you leave about a quarter of an inch of space from the edge of the material. For the setting, set the view to combined, which should be the default. This allows us to both engrave and cut. Focus the laser by selecting plunger where it says autofocus. For each engraving or cut, click the folder button where there is a handy material library to import your material settings. It already knows by the thickness of the text that we want to engrave, so it defaults to this tab. Now since we are using wood, we can scroll down to that section and select photo engraving. We will repeat the same process for the other part. This will similarly default to the vector tab for cutting because the lines are of hairline thickness. Again, scroll down to wood and select the appropriate thickness. A fourth of an inch works for our material. Now we want to split by color to organize our cuts. Select the gear to open up a larger menu. Then split by color. The settings for both new cuts should follow from the original, so we do not have to reset anything. But if we had split by color before assigning the material settings, we would have to do this separately for both. We want to order our engravings and cuts such that the piece lays flat for as long as possible to prevent any issues. Ensure that you engrave, cut the inner line, and then cut the outer line by reorganizing if necessary. This will keep the part stable on the bed and ensure that they come out flush. This ordering of engraving, then cutting any inner holes, and then cutting any outer frames should be used in general for any job that you are working on. Finally, print the design by selecting print, which will send it to the machine. Check the screen on the laser cutter to confirm it shows the correct file name, which includes your unique Android ID. This is crucial to avoid using the wrong settings and potentially starting a fire. Press start and watch while the machine is running. First, the machine will use the plunger to properly adjust the height of the bed. Make sure that it does this over a solid portion of your material so that it does not hit the metal grate underneath. Then, once focused, the machine will start the job and execute it in the order that you previously set it. Notice that for our gear, the laser does the engraving first, followed by cutting the inner hole, and then finally cutting the outer frame. Do not leave the laser unattended while it's running, otherwise you'll be banned from TechSpark. You will notice a pinprick of light or a small, narrow flame, and you will observe smoke that will be sucked out the back of the machine. While this is fine, but it is important that you watch carefully in case there is a spreading flame. Be sure to also keep your finger next to the start and pause button while staying attentive as you may need to stop the machine at a moment's notice or step away and resume your cut later. After the job is finished, check that the material is cut all the way through by gently prodding the edges. If the material moves, you won't be able to restart the same job. Once confirmed, remove all material, including debris, as leftover debris can affect the next job's material and focal point, potentially causing a fire. Finally, close the lid, and that's it. You've successfully completed your laser cutting project. Thank you for watching.